Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and I make videos about hand sewing, hand quilting and English paper piecing. I generally make chatty styles of videos and tutorials so if that's something that you'll be interested in do check out the rest of my channel. Now I've very recently been sewing some Christmas hexagons together. And I actually had quite a few requests on my last hexagon video to show you how to join the individual flowers because this is two rounds of hexagons around a flower. So if I can hold it up properly. <laughs> just while I've got this little bit of footage playing over the top, I just wanted to take a quick moment just to apologise for my breathing and breathlessness in this video. If you watched my video last week, you'll know that I have been quite ill the last couple of weeks. So it's just limited lung capacity and nasaliness. So I do apologise about that. I'll put a little bit of music on just so that you don't have to listen to me breathing so much. <laughs> I hope you understand, you just know it's that time of year, don't you? So we've got the red in the middle, then we've got a circle around it and another circle. It's just because these are two and a half inch hexagons, they're massive, so it's quite hard to see the flower design. Well, not necessarily the flower design, but to see that it's in circles this all I have been doing is adding directly to this piece I'm just adding a piece every time and that's how I intended to add to it until I saw a few comments where people was asking me to show how to join the flowers so I've created this one and I am part way through sewing this flower but I am tempted to just leave it as a block like that and, and join it on but I have got but I have set aside the extra pieces to complete that and to make it a hexagon flower now this is not done with English paper piecing this is all sewn without any papers included and the method is actually called hand piecing um, it's just a way of quilting without a machine and without papers included this is yet to be ironed, which is why the seams look so three-dimensional. I tend just to leave the seams a little bit and just press them all because you don't actually stitch into your seam allowance, unlike when you're doing it on the machine. So all this seam allowance is just left free, which is why it stands proud quite a bit. So if you've never done hand piecing before or you haven't seen my previous video showing you the basics, I'll leave a link to that down in the description, but you might be able to pick up some of it today um, in this video, but there is a detailed tutorial for you on this page. So I'm gonna join this one to this one. So what I'll do first of all is I'll switch the camera angle and then I also need to figure out the placement because it's kind of a random placement but I don't want two the same next to each other so I'll figure out where I'm going to sew them and we'll get into it. So here we are then. I just wanted to show you that I've got all of this project just stored in this really nice Christmas box got a really nice Christmas lid and it's a massive box it was £3.79 from the card factory and you can get some really good gift boxes that double up as great little project storage oh so these are all the fabrics that I'm using I've cut some already and I've got a stack just here of hexagons that I've already cut out and I've drawn the line on the back because with hand piecing you have a stitching line that you follow just to make sure that your stitches are even, not even, um, like with a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's say the, the commenter that asked me to do this tutorial said they had lots of these hexagon flowers that they had to sew together. So if you've got multiples of these, my advice would be lay them out in like a temporary arrangement and then just offer pieces up and, you know, rearrange it or do I like it there, do I like it here. Just switch it all around and then step back and make sure that you like the colour ratio and distribution 
because otherwise you might end up with let's say in this instance you might end up with these dark ones a little bit too close I didn't actually notice that they're in a straight line there but I don't think they're too close and I'm also in this case going to pay attention to I don't want the reds or the pinks too close because the main colours are these blues with a few of these odd ones thrown in so we don't want it there because that's too close no i think i'll go for this end because oh then a pink maybe there and all you'll do is just offer them up to each other essentially do you like that where it is and in that case i do but this is why I've been just joining mine as I go because now I've got this piece here and it might just be because this one's larger than this one but all I'll do is I'll just go in and fill that in. But I do have this one which I guess could slot in there like that. So let's begin and I'll give you some tips of joining because you will have quite a few Y seams here that you want to make sure that they're nice and secure. It did make me laugh upon watching this footage back that I was talking about trying not to repeat colours quite close to each other and I've gone and put two colours next door but one to each other that are the same but never mind I didn't notice it while I was making it so I'm sure I won't notice when it's all sewn together. So with this technique pinning is quite important to make sure that your seams don't shift and that you don't get any bunching helps you ease any pieces together if necessary. So you start at the, the inner corner of your shape and you do this very small running stitch all the way along taking back stitches every couple of stitches. I usually load my needle up with maybe about five or six stitches now that I've got a little bit more experience but when I first started I just did two or three stitches and that was perfect. When I get to the corner I always go right into the corner and just do a little locking stitch as well. So what I do when I get to the corner, so as you can see I've got three pieces here that intersect. We've got this light blue, the dark blue and the pink and they're all intersecting here. And what I do make sure I do is that I do a stitch in the very join of all three. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm on the pink. If my thread was on the blue, I'd travel to the pink. I would just put a stitch through and come out on the pink. But I'm already here on the pink, which as I think is an ideal place. And then I go in right on the corner and I come up a smidge past the corner. So here you can probably just about see my dot, it's, it's literally just past my needle. So let me do it a little bit further. So I've just come up, the dot's there and I've come up a little bit past. So I'm going to pull my needle out, pull there quite tight so you're getting everything secure and go in, bang on the corner and then come up on the dark blue side, bang on the corner. Make sure you've not caught the pink and then give that a pull and you've gone through every single one bang on the corner now and you can do a little another stitch straight in there just catching a, through a few different threads and pull that through and then do a back stitch and start stitching as normal and that will make sure that that Y seam is really secure and just stitch along as normal and I'll show you again when we get to the next one. So I actually haven't got enough thread to do a continuous stitching line to the next um, seam. Well, I've only got enough to get to here. I haven't got enough to go any further. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie off. So again, going straight into the corner, pull through, and then I do a little back stitch, and I actually just pass my needle through the loop twice, 
just to make it secure. Some people just choose to do several back stitches here, but I find it easier to actually just uh, do a little knot. So let's have a look. We've just done this one. That looks great. That crease is just because of that crease there. There isn't a pucker or anything there. The seam that we're doing here is now this one. So we'll fold it over and just repeat the same steps. So the thread that I'm using is the same as always, just a thin weight polyester, which I use for machine embroidery because I have a machine embroidery business. So it's just what is on hand for me. And again, some people choose not to knot their thread, um, but I have trust issues. <laughs> so I do a quilter's knot, a quilter's knot. Right, so here you've got a choice where you put your needle in and the natural choice might be just to go from this light blue, the dark blue to the light blue. But again, you want to secure all three together. So I'm going to come at it from this one. So go through, come up slightly past the dot. You can see the dot a little bit better on that one. into the dot. The dot just represents the corner in this instance. It depends how you've marked your shape. Right into the corner again and pull through. You can do a back stitch here if you want a little bit of extra security. So pull through and do the same again. I do have a few videos on my channel talking about different templates and things like that. Um, but again, if you have any questions whatsoever, just leave me a comment. And like I have done on this one, I'll do a video response. Or you can message me on any of my other social media platforms. And I'll usually respond on there as well. So there we have it. We've joined those together. So that's the seam, uh, those two are the seams that we've done. Again, it looks like there's a pucker there, but it's not, it's just the way the fabric is folded. So I might give this an iron in a moment, just so you can see exactly how flat these seams go, because that can be quite daunting to start with. But let me try and even this out a little bit, because now we've got quite an odd shape. So let me have a look and see what pieces I can add to this. So we've got this section here that needs filling and I could put this one of four because that's not going to go anywhere else, is it? But I need to sew that up first because that's not connected there. So I can sew that up and perhaps slot that in. Or would it be better that way? And then what I'll continue to do rather than making individual flowers is I'll just work on top of these pieces. Yeah, so I'll just work on top of these and then just keep adding to it in a more organic way because I do find that easier than doing the flowers. But if you're perhaps doing something kind of like a grandmother's garden type of orientation, then it is good to do the, um, the hexagon flowers rather than just building on top of each hexagon like I am here. But I think because it is, you know, um, more of a random quilt, it's easier just to add the pieces. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know I'm more of a flattener than a perfectionist when it comes to my pressing. And some of you have commented in the past about why do I use fabric that has got some creases in? Well, I'm just a bit too lazy to get the iron out. As you can tell from this video, I do just craft on my dining table. So it's a bit limited for space and sometimes I just don't want to get everything out. But when it comes to pressing your hand piecing, I don't press my seams open just because I don't want to do anything that would weaken the seams. So I just press to one side and um, it will be just fine.
So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and are interested in learning a little bit more about hand piecing. Like I said, it is a slightly different technique to English paper piecing and I do actually think it's quite a bit quicker. Um, the prep work is maybe similar but the stitching time I think is quicker but leave me your opinions on hand piecing versus English paper piecing obviously still love English paper piecing and I've got so many of those projects on the go but it's nice just to spice it up and feel like that you're doing something different even when it's still a hexagon so if I don't get to speak to you before Christmas I do wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I hope you get lots of enjoyable time with family and friends and also lots of crafting time because that is on our wish list isn't it? Lots of time to do our crafts but you take care. Bye!